what is wrong with wonderlands i know a lot of you guys want to immediately just go right down there and start typing your answers but hear me out first wonderlands is a great game one of the best in the borderlands franchise at launch but and this is a kim kardashian sized butt here wonderlands is also very disappointing so why what went wrong in just over a month of time with the game let's start with the obvious culprits early on prior to the first patch for the game we had a huge pistol nerf and two nerfs for the Clawbringer. Granted, the Clawbringer nerfs were actually fixes to things that weren't working properly, but to take those things away while not adding positive improvements for the character, at least not until the patch, which was a week later, left a bad taste in the mouths of some of the players. And the pistol nerf was just wild. It hit multiple pistols that nobody was even using, and it buffed the gluttony into being an absolute beast. So let's talk about balance. Balance in Borderlands games is important, whether you realize it or not. Borderlands 2 at launch had some very broken weapons like the Evil Smasher, the Bee in the Conference Call combo, and several other things. And if those things were left unfixed, Borderlands 2 probably dies and fades into obscurity within a year. Tops. As great a game as it is, if you're just insta-killing raid bosses, you're going to get bored quick. Same thing with Borderlands 3. Early on, they made a bunch of adjustments. Some were great, some were head-scratchingly bad, but by the end of Borderlands 3's content cycle, the game was left in an amazing state. Tons of stuff to do, a massive amount of free content, and a bunch of fun DLCs. But those early nerfs left such an impression on players, fair or not, that Gearbox quote unquote nerfed fun. So maybe Wonderlands is going down the same path as Borderlands 2 and 3, making changes that people probably don't like so much early on, but will pay off in the long run. Now the next obvious culprit here is that the first paid DLC, or as they're calling it this time around for some reason, PLC, or post launch content. However, label it it was a disappointment the hub area is beautiful vesper is hot but once you go through the mirror it feels pretty samey it basically feels like chaos chambers which is what this game basically wants you to do all the time the enemies are just more coiled enemies more sharks and some of them aren't even named at least on the pc version the puzzles are just spin this column to match three shark heads and it's just it's just lacking. I like the boss chums, but even that is disappointing with any sort of decent build. I don't know. I just feel like this PLC was the biggest misstep in recent years for Gearbox. The second PLC, which at the time of recording this video just launched, and it's definitely better, but I feel like a golden opportunity was missed with this game. When you have this bunkers and badasses themed game, you could go in a million directions with story content and add in some really decent sized DLC. DLCs. Maybe Gearbox didn't think that this game would perform as well as a mainline title and they didn't want to spend a lot of time and resources on the post-launch content. I don't know. It just feels so short. The boss fight for PLC 2 is definitely much tougher, however, and they have made the Wheel of Fate more rewarding at the end. However, having the PLC items drop from the barf bunnies is a huge mistake in my opinion. Keep them locked to this content, make this content matter. Regardless, I hope they beef these things up a bit more. Now on to some less obvious culprits, the loot system and their fix for it. At launch, the loot system worked like this. You start the game with minimal loot luck. As you level up, you increase your loot luck. Along the way, you can pick up dice, you complete the RNG loot shrine, these things will boost your loot luck. There's also loot luck rolls on various items to further boost it. Now the problem with this is that dedicated drops are tied to this. Dedicated drops are drops that you can farm from a named enemy or boss who has a higher chance to drop it than anywhere else in the game. In every previous Borderlands game, dedicated drops had a locked in percentage attached to them. For example, Savage Lee in Borderlands 2 has a 10% chance to drop the Unkempt Herald. Road Dog in Borderlands 3 has a 10% chance to drop the Hellwalker. Even in Borderlands the pre-sequel, Drongo Bones could drop the Fatal SMG 10% of the time. So why did Wonderlands change this system that we are so accustomed to? Well, Wonderlands isn't Borderlands. I get that, but it's also very much Borderlands, if you know what I mean. This game is on the same engine as Borderlands 3, and it's based off of a DLC from Borderlands 2. So it absolutely is a Borderlands game, and having such a dramatic shift in the loot system is not ideal. I have stronger words for this, 
but I'm gonna go with it's not ideal. But Gearbox tried to address this issue in a unique way. With the first patch, they made the lucky dice account wide. So if you collect all the dice on one character, then all of your others will receive that loot luck bonus as they level up. And then they just have to go complete the RNG shrine and do all the other things. That did not address the dedicated drop problem at all. Part of the issue with dedicated drops in this game is that some named enemies don't respawn on their original maps, but you can find them in the chaos chamber having nearly 70 named enemies who don't respawn on maps means the loss of 70 potential places to spread out loot instead we get lachance and banshee both with three dedicated drops each so even if you have maximum loot luck which means you've gone all the way to the end game you've got max chaos level you have a 19 percent chance for them to drop something which sounds better than the 10 percent we had on previous games until you realize that that 19 percent is split by the number of of drops in their loot pool so lachance and banshee have about a six percent chance to drop each of their three drops most other bosses have two drops in their pool so at best you have about a 9.5 percent drop chance from those and that's close to the previous drop rates but again that's with maximum loot luck that means you basically have to beat the game unlock most of the chaos chambers if not all the chaos chambers and then you get that percentage meanwhile on borderlands 2 you can go get the best all-around gun in the game at around level 10. Maybe this was done to combat the community sitting on one or two weapons for the majority of a playthrough, I don't know, but one of the fun things in Borderlands games is always hunting for your gear. And right now, trying to get specific gear to make progress through the Chaos Chamber is a huge pain in the ass. Now, on to some other minor points. Borderlands 3 had a roadmap. They gave it to us pretty early on, and they stuck to it, delivering some excellent content and memorable DLCs. So far with Wonderlands, there's been no sign of a roadmap map or even any sort of communication to the community at large about overall plans. When fans feel like their time isn't being spent in a rewarding way, they dip out. And sadly, we are seeing a lot of people dipping out from Wonderlands, possibly to never return because of this bad taste is being left in their mouth. And it's a shame because Wonderlands has so much potential. The framework for greatness is there, just as it was with the pre-sequel, but I'm praying that they learn from that mistake and they pivot to make this the absolute best Borderlands game ever. So what do you guys think is wrong with Wonderlands? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more Borderlands and Wonderlands content. Thank you guys for watching. Take care.